What's up guys, JT Shaver here with New Layer and today I wanna to share with you a change that I've been dying to make for the past three years. I was hoping to include a little more unboxing footage, but the box for this is literally bigger than my desk, so. This is the SW321C, and it is BenQ's flagship monitor geared mostly towards photographers. I'm not gonna string you along on the price because this monitor is expensive at just one penny under $2,000. But over the last few years of using a mid-range monitor, I've decided that it's actually worth the cost for me, and I know that some of you might be in the same boat. This monitor is 32 inches with an IPS type panel and it has a 4K or Ultra HD resolution of 3840 by 2160. I'm not gonna sit here and list all the tech specs because they will have a link in the description if you wanna check those out in depth, but I am gonna talk about my experience with this monitor and why I think it might be worth the price. I will say up front that if you're looking for the brightest monitor with the most vibrant colors and striking contrast, this probably isn't the one for you. This is meant to be used as a reference monitor that is as neutral and technically color accurate as you can get. And color accurate does not usually mean the most stunning. The SW321C is for when you wanna create something that looks as good as possible on as many screens as possible, and also to proof prints before printing. There's a few things that go into the color accuracy of this monitor, as well as just the overall look. The first thing is the panel itself, which as I mentioned is an IPS type panel. IPS panels have advantages and disadvantages over other types. Typically you get better color reproduction, wider viewing angles, and better visibility when there's light contamination. They're also less efficient, have a slower pixel response time, and just cost more to produce. So if you're on a tight budget or also want to use your monitor for gaming or something like that, this might not be the best option. The anti-glare on this screen is extremely good. I tried opening all the windows in my office and shining some lights on this monitor and it does a fantastic job at eliminating any specular highlights and glare. I know in the video it's pretty clear, but in a real world scenario, it's the best monitor that I've ever used. One other quick thing to mention is that this monitor also comes with a little roller for cleaning the screen. It actually works really well and I live in a rural area so we get a lot of dust in the house so it really comes in handy. Now if you really want to eliminate glare completely it also comes with a monitor hood which I have installed right now. It's really high quality plastic and has a velvety material inside to keep light from bouncing around and it can be assembled in both landscape and portrait orientations. The light in my office is pretty controlled so I usually don't have this installed but if you're working in a shared office or a room with a lot of windows, this thing will be a lifesaver. I was originally really excited that this monitor comes fully calibrated from the factory. Unfortunately, I had some hiccups along the way, but it did turn out fine in the end. The SW321C does come with a factory calibration report, but unfortunately, I just really don't care about that because I had to calibrate it myself anyways. When I first turned this monitor on, it was really obvious that the colors were off. I thought I might not have to calibrate this based on how much BenQ promotes their factory calibration report, but it definitely needed it out of the box. To be fair, if you're buying a monitor for design or photography or video, let alone one that costs $2,000, you 100% should get a hardware calibration device. The calibration on this monitor is different than others in that it is a hardware calibration instead of just software. And I'm not just talking about the hardware device that's used to calibrate it. This monitor actually stores a 16-bit LUT in the monitor itself rather than using a software calibration profile. From my understanding, that will give you a more accurate and longer lasting calibration. You can still do software calibration and I tested both and they both looked fantastic, but BenQ recommends the hardware calibration. All that said, after I got everything calibrated and verified with my Spider X, everything looked as good as I hoped. Just plan on calibrating this monitor right after you set it up. BenQ has something called AQ Color, which is basically how they explain the color precision in all of their products. This monitor covers 99% of the Adobe RGB color space, 100% of sRGB and Rec. 709, and 95% of DCI-P3 or DisplayP3. This monitor also has what BenQ calls their uniformity technology. 
So on a lot of monitors, you might have a color in one area of the screen that's also on another area of the screen, but if you actually compare them, they're quite different. So the uniformity technology splits the screen up into multiple smaller subregions and matches those together, so it's really color accurate across the entire display. There's another piece of this kit that I really like, which is their hotkey puck. It's a little hardware controller used to navigate the on-screen display, and it's infinitely faster than using the buttons on the display itself. It has three custom function buttons that are set to three different color spaces by default, but you can change them to do anything you want. The monitor stand also has a perfect little resting space for the hotkey puck to keep everything nice and neat, which I always love. Now, I don't have a photo printer myself, but if you do, there is another feature I wanted to mention called Paper Color Sync. This allows you to preview what a picture would look like using a specific printer and paper combination before you actually print it. Back when I used to do more printing, I wasted a ton of paper and ink doing test prints, so this is a feature I think a ton of people are gonna like. It only supports a few printers at the moment, but I know they're adding more, and again, I haven't been able to personally test this, but I have seen third-party reviews of this feature, and it actually works better than they thought. On top of all the other ports this monitor has, it also has a USB-C port for data as well as 60 watts of power, so this could be a perfect monitor for docking and charging a laptop at the same time. It also has a built-in SD card reader, which in theory is really amazing, but it's actually kind of hard to reach. I really wish it was on the side of the bezel like some other BenQ monitors, because then I could get rid of my desktop external card reader and just keep my desk a little cleaner. I wouldn't really recommend this for gaming because of the slower refresh rate and pixel response time, although I have been spending more time than I care to admit on Call of Duty lately. But for hybrid photographers, videographers, and content creators like me, I think it's going to be hard to beat. As far as downsides go, there are a few things that might bother you. I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of color spaces when it comes to software, but I was a bit confused at how the color spaces worked in the hardware mode on this monitor. You can change the color mode on the monitor and set different color profiles in your software, so I just wasn't sure how those might combine and work. From my conversations with BenQ, you should keep this monitor in Adobe RGB basically all the time unless you have a specific reason not to. Like if you're editing something for broadcast TV, you'll want to keep it in Rec. 709. Luckily, this monitor has three custom calibrations that you can set, and you can set each of those to a different color mode and change easily between the three using the hotkey puck. Another thing is that the bezel on this monitor is pretty thick compared to others, and this doesn't bother me at all, but there are people that honestly get really angry if their bezels aren't extremely thin. One other minor annoyance is that the DisplayPort cable that came with this monitor actually did not work for me. It was mini DisplayPort on one end and full-size DisplayPort on the other, but both my graphics card and this monitor are full-size DP, so I just had to use HDMI. If you're dead set on using DisplayPort, you might just have to get a different cable depending on the output on your graphics card. Like I mentioned right off the bat, this is an expensive monitor. If you don't need something so big, there are smaller 27-inch and 24-inch versions that might be perfect for you, especially if you're working with a multiple monitor setup. There's the SW271, which is essentially the 27-inch version of this monitor with the same 4K resolution, smaller bezels, and it's $900 less. Then there's the SW240, which is a 24-inch version with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 and it's only about $400, so really affordable for a quality monitor. Definitely look at all the specs on those if you're considering them because there are other differences that I just can't mention in this video. I'm not gonna try to convince you that you need the flagship version of this monitor, but even given how expensive it is, I do think it makes sense for more people than it might seem. I was thinking about what my most used piece of equipment is, and it's actually my monitor. I spend 40 plus hours a week staring at that thing, so it made sense to put the money there. It's kinda like buying an expensive bed because you do spend about a third of your life lying in your bed. I'm not trying to sound like a BenQ spokesperson because they're not paying for me this video, I just really like their monitors. I use it for everything including photo editing, video editing and color grading, and of course the occasional drop into the war zone. If you haven't checked out Wakaz Kazi, he's a fantastic colorist and uses this as his secondary reference monitor. I'm nowhere near needing feature film color grading accuracy, so if it's good enough for him, it probably works for the rest of us. So what do you think? Could you justify spending two grand on a monitor like this or even less on the smaller versions? Leave a comment and let me know what you think because I reply to every single one. There's a lot of tech specs to look through when it comes to monitors, so I'll have links in the description so you can check those out. And they are affiliate links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra and it really helps me create more videos like this. I do gear reviews and other videos every week, so make sure you hit subscribe and follow me on social media so you don't miss the next one. 
That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.